Good morning, folks. Special message at the end, so stick around. If you didn't catch last night's update, the earth-facing coronal hole triggered one more big quake. The Grease 6-pointer was followed by a mid-6 magnitude shake in the West Pacific. The video last night was mostly about HelioViewer, which is back, HD, Earth scale, and all. We have some activity in progress. Two filaments are lifting north center and departing on the north. Don't know how long these ones will hang out. If they don't, their replacements are dancing over the northeastern limb now, coming into view behind the bright active regions. Those active sunspot areas are not so active. Solar flaring is low. Despite a phenomenal surge upward in sunspot number, gamma magnetic classifications, and good umbral size. We have no significant magnetic complexity, no delta spots. Either we have too much spread for interaction, or we see the larger umbras in these groups buffered from the opposite polarity umbras by smaller spots and surface plagues. Coronal hole stream here in the solar wind finally ending as speed and plasma temperature begin to drop. The sensitive meters are calming from those reverberations and magnetic storms, and Earth's magnetic shield is recovering this morning. Got a couple of shares for you. Iris, giving us a recent window into the heartbeat of the sun. The waveforms in the sunspot are broken down in our electric earth and sun section over at suspiciousobservers.org. Also got a video of day turning into night in Belarus as a major dust storm hit the area. Things went black as night. There's some controversy over a potential UFO in this video as well. An object flies overhead that honestly first hit me as a napkin or piece of paper or something small and light that could get tossed about by the wind. But there's a problem with my first instinct there. I looked for videos, explanations, and actually went outside and tried to recreate a non-tumbling geostatic orientation to something in the wind. It's not that easy. This thing does not bend or roll or jolt. I'm also not a UFO expert, so I'm asking you for your ideas here. Spectacular article on atmospheric waves on Jupiter. It should also help you discern between Earth's atmospheric gravity waves and what could be weather modification. We also have the latest global climate update. If you live in far northern Canada or Siberia, it was hot as can be, but otherwise it was a very solid mix of hot and cold. Link is below. In Alaska, we have a power low driving a convergence up that will deliver the moisture you see here on the precipitable water overlay. We will keep that on for the United States to illuminate why we're having bad weather in the center. That energy races up to meet cold, dry air from the north and the west, and we'll have yet another day of tornadoes dropping, major thunderstorms, and a blizzard on the back side. That'll be fun to deal with today. Infrared shows the activity along that line coming again tonight. Top note in Europe is a high pressure node here that is clearing the clouds in that area, but we've got them pretty much everywhere else still watching the North Atlantic low. In Australia, we have that same convergence line cutting across here, and we've got a low at New Zealand. The clouds following those lines and areas to a T as usual. The Mobile Observatory project kicks back into gear today, flying out to Denver for our public event this afternoon at the Denver Waldorf School. All details are at observatoryproject.com. Now because of today's travel, today's episode of Fly on the Wall will be both shortened and a bit delayed in its release. I may not get that to you until tomorrow, but there's a couple new Deeper Look episodes you can check out. You've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.